Welcome to The Light Conversations. I am so delighted today to be speaking with leadership coach, Mary Graham. Mary, how are you and where in the world are you at this time? I'm really good, thank you, Jada. I'm sitting in, in Southwest London uh, in a gray, gray day and uh, full moon today. So lots of quite intense energy around. I'm noticing even early in the morning as I'm out doing my power work walk. And uh, yeah, I'm really good. And I'm so delighted to be connected with you again. Wonderful. Um, I love that power work, power walk. Do you do some power yes. work whilst you're power walking? Absolutely. Do, do, you know, movement, the brain, oh, my ideas, my gut, my intuition, everything. And, and I always laugh to myself because on my last few meters as I'm returning back to the house, there's like 10 ideas just download and I grab my phone and stick it into notes and run in the door. Oh, I've had an idea. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. So has your, um, has your daily routine changed uh, over the last few months? Yeah, but my, my husband and I were, were talking about that uh, and not really because we, we feel really fortunate in the phase of life that we're in. So both of our elderly mothers died three or four years ago. I'm so delighted that it wasn't now. I no doubt we would have been really stressed and anxious uh, with that. So very, very grateful that that phase, that part, the kids are out the door. The grandkids are all happy and healthy and Dave and I have a very simple routine. We're both self-employed, so we make a really conscious choice that if we want to go out and about, we go midweek when everybody else is at work. And, you know, so we already kind of navigate around, you know, busy, powerful city by taking the gifts of being self-employed to go out and about on a, on a Wednesday afternoon when everybody else is working, then I might do a bit of work at home on a Saturday. And it's just phenomenal. So actually our routine hasn't changed very much. We, we lead a very simple life. And uh, so yes, obviously anxious about, you know, the wider family and how they're doing. But he and I, not really much except we're so missing football. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes yes well hopefully that will return eventually um and so most of your work is is online now then obviously rather than in person was that something you were already doing or is this kind of a new thing so i was planning anyway to be moving more online in the next two years so it's been fast forwarded and made happen sooner thank you very much universe and uh, all of the leaders that i'm working with are all articulating that screen is great and being based at home is great and nothing can take away the human interaction so now you know, in week 11 12 wherever we are everybody that i'm working with is articulating i can't wait to get back in a room with the human beings and and have that just sweet spot of humanity together, working together creatively. So, you know, that, that balance of some online and good face-to-face, -face, I, I think that's what we're aiming for. Mm, do you find that it, it's different in a coaching session from the in-person experience to the online? Do people open up as much online? I, I can only speak for what's happened for me. So I was a little bit cautious about, ooh, how is this going to work? And I have experienced and clients leaders have fed back to me that the on-screen stuff is great and i think that what i really do uh, more of so you know when i arrive in somebody's office and big corporate headquarters i always ground myself breathe and uh, pick a card actually i picked a card for us today what did you funnily enough yeah. i'm going to read it to you in a minute okay. so i do all that inner work of making sure that i'm really settled and calm you know not flying in the door like some wild crazy person and you know attempting to be there for somebody else while i'm all, all unsettled so online hmm. to really get that soulful heart connection i'm doing even more groundedness and i'm inviting the client to also do some breathing and, and you know really ground themselves so I think it's just good disciplines worked a little bit harder that's all <laughs> yes actually you're, you're reminding me that it's something I kind of wish we had done together as we started this session do you think that maybe we could do a mini version of that now yeah well I picked a card for us so let's start with that so just 
um, feel your posture, notice where your breathing is. I've got a little bit excited in talking to you, so I'm, my breathing's gone up to my throat, so I'm just taking a breath down into my belly and letting my shoulders drop as they go up when I'm excited. And um, so, and for you, you know, you've got a young family, so you're switching roles regularly, couple of minutes transition. So just feel the power of your breath in your body. And yeah, beautiful, let go of anything that might be buzzing around anything that might be concerning and really breathe into the power of your breath and the power of that amazing body heart and mind connected and feel yourself coming home into yourself and connecting and just savor that moment of peace and power that happens when we reconnect our intellect, our heart, our wisdom, and feel the serenity, power, and possibility coming back. And just savor that. And I love you just keep keep yourself really relaxed while I read out the cards. So I really love the Brahma Kumis cards. I use them a lot. Yeah. Um, I see them on desks everywhere around the world uh, with, with the leaders that I work with in all sorts of different countries. And I picked, I made a wish for us and our collaboration today. And I picked a card. I haven't looked at it. So here's, here's the synchronicity of what, we've, what you've just invited us to do, the power of the full moon. And this is the card, the power to withdraw. So that's the heading, the power to withdraw. Okay. And the words from what we get when we choose the power to withdraw. You are powerful during quiet reflection on your personal values. You move to the heart of the matter and you protect yourself from irrelevant influence. Mm -hmm. So that for me with the leaders that i coach you know and you're a leader in your world and influencer and as a parent and in many other areas of your life we are out there amongst it being of service and, and delivering our leadership philosophy and then so important to go back inside and reconnect with who am i how am i bringing my values and my uniqueness to my part in leading change leading transformation and that card absolutely sums up and i thought how wonderful i could see my husband this morning um looking at the news about what's going to happen in the next few weeks as we are released and we are back into whatever the new normal looks like and there's a lot of negative energy around at the moment with people saying i don't know if i want to do that and are they asking me to do this and is that fair and that ex external irrelevant influence yeah being able to go back inside and reconnect with mm. i'll just take my part i'll navigate around and i don't need to get embroiled in some big twitter feed about whether the government are right or wrong i want to look in the mirror stay connected to my personal values and use that power to withdraw when the outside might be focusing on the negative Oh, that's really, really good. I think that's super relevant and important to hear that, hear you saying that right now. The word discernment comes to mind. Oh, yes. When you're reading that card, that sort of like, is, is this serving me? Is this not? I have the power to choose. And that's a beautiful reminder of that. The other word that jumped out at me whilst you were um, doing that grounding was savoring. That's mm. such a beautiful word and a beautiful idea. And whilst you said that I, I really came into full presence like the word savoring suddenly it's like anchoring into paying attention to the feelings within and what's going on around so two important words came to me there savoring and discernment and i think that's a real gift what you just said as well as we prepare to to re-enter the world of of engaging with each other in real life again um, this this idea that we have the power to choose what 
who we engage with, what we engage with, and what thoughts stick in our heads. So that's really beautiful, that card. I love those cards. Thank you for reminding me about those. So let's go straight to the topic of leadership coaching, because that is your expertise. And I really would love to know a little bit about the background, the, you know, the, the origins of this idea of coaching and leadership coaching, and how you came to find it, and, uh, and what you want people to know about it. But that's three questions in one. So I can break them down again. Maybe let's start with the origins of coaching, and what drew you to that work. Yeah, yeah, great. Absolutely great. So back in 1990, when you were merely a very young, young person, and I was at your stage, you know, newly married and, and all of that, I realized that developing brands for Heinz and Unilever was great, and it wasn't really hitting the spot for me. And, and I realized that developing people was what I was passionate about. So in 1990, you know, no internet, no mobile phone, the world was a really different place and there were some amazing pioneers out there really i mean really you know i think of myself as a pioneer but my goodness not the bravery and courage of louise hay marianne williamson dan millman the the real seminal work that they were putting out there when we were in a world in the 1990 that it was just about iq and money and no, we're not going to talk about our feelings. You just, you just have to get rid of those. And let's get back to focusing on what we can talk about, what we know and how much money we can make. So, you know, the world was a really, really different place. And most of my friends thought I was completely bonkers, well I am. And, you know, stepping off a healthy career and going out into the unknown to learn at the feet of these amazing pioneers. And so, as I was doing that learning, I got clear like really quickly in about 1991, 92, that my purpose was to work with leaders who wanted to bring the whole person into the culture, that we could have profit and integrity, profit and good quality relationships, profit and really super, super well-being. So I got really clear that, I, that I'm passionate about the whole person and that I'm actually here to kind of be behind the scenes with leaders. They're the front facing. I'm behind the scenes supporting them to create organizations where the whole person will flourish. There was no coaching in 1990, 1991. It was things that sports people had and coaching didn't exist. Tony Robbins came over from the U.S., 1994 this giant charismatic guy got up in a stage in Wembley Stadium I was behind Terry Venables who was the England soccer coach at the time everybody was in suits Tony got us up dancing you can imagine all these little breaks <laughs> who were like dancing in public with a suit on this is not happening so you know lots of people were absolutely overwhelmed and Tony Robbins was the first person that brought get inside your head, understand your head. And then coaching became something. And then the coaching association started and proper accreditation started. So, you know, I was right there before, before coaching even existed. And I would just ring people up and say, so I've got a bit of an idea of a workshop I could run for you. Are you prepared to let me come in and have an experiment? And then I worked with uh, doctors in the health service and I worked in prisons because I realized if I was going to do really be of service to leaders what I needed to really understand was the you know the well-educated well-resourced leaders have got access and power and can make changes really quickly local people on the ground with daily struggles that's where if they can transform that's really inspiring yeah because you know i'm one of the lucky lucky ones i'm well educated well resourced so you know if somebody puts something in front of me i can make it happen yeah if i'm you know standing in the bus queue i've got no money i'm stressed out i've got problems at home that's really challenging to make transformation so i did my research in the NHS and in prisons about what is it that people want to transform and so I really tested the whole person model in some challenging scenarios with some superb support from pioneering GPs, pioneering uh, you know prison officers and all behind the scenes I was chipping away at developing my leadership product and that then got me to the millennium so that's you know very different world 
Yeah. I really want to talk more about the whole person model that you've created. Like, so you've just told us a bit about the experimental phase of testing yeah. it under different circumstances. Um, and then did you come to a conclusion with it or is it still evolving or is it something now that you're like, this works and we are working with this and, and what is it exactly? Yeah. So I feel that it's, I'm, I'm a pragmatist, but I have an inner perfectionist who can drive me mad. So I decide to have a stronger inner pragmatist who can talk my inner perfectionist down because otherwise that I'm not a very nice person to be around when my inner perfectionist is in charge. So pragmatically 80%. Um, it's done. I've been using it um, every day for the last 10 years out in the corporate world, China, Japan, India, US, Europe, and 16 core exercises that we all wish we had had at school to help us understand who we really are, how we take care of ourselves spiritually, emotionally, cognitively, and physically, and then how we then create wonderful interdependent relationships based on our values, how we give each other great feedback, and how then together we build cultures where there can be harmony, peace and, you know, flow of income. And how do we, so the 16 tried and tested exercises. And we spent a lot of time in the early 2000s talking about getting them into the school curriculum. I was working at the House of Lords. We hosted a lot of head teachers and they all said, we need this. And we are too busy filling kids full of facts and figures. So I don't know how we would fit it in. So that was the early 2000s. And of course, fast forward now where 45% of kids have a mental health issue. So now we're in crisis. So rather than proactively, because that's what we stand for as, as the whole person leadership organization is proactively making it happen before the crisis hits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you're doing something when you feel good, you've got energy. When you're waiting till the crisis hits to fix, you're on the back foot. I'm exhausted when I've got myself into crisis. I'm not thinking straight. And then how the hell can I implement? As one of my leaders said last week, I'm just too exhausted to think about inventing something new and implementing it. And so unfortunately, um, as many phenomenal philosophers like Eckhart Tolle predicted, rather than being proactive and putting in the whole person up front when, you know, at the end of the 90s and the 2000s in the western world we said yeah we've got all this money we're doing really phenomenally nothing's broken oh, oh but it was broken and it was simmering and now fish bash bosh it's in our faces and we're in crisis so right and yeah 16 and exercises 16 exercises to transform the individual and as a result transform a culture yeah when a culture transforms the world transforms right it's it's becoming becoming the change yes uh, and i i need to um put in here which is included in the intro but i have studied with you and i have studied yes. so i am a living example of how awesome it is what you teach and now that i have skipped forward 10 years i've got children it's even more important to me that that this these ideas are taught to children in school. Um, I, you know, I've been speaking with different headmasters and, and things at this time, and and it does seem like they are more concerned with the well-being of young people, and they are, you know, it's divided. There's the academia; they've got to get good grades, and then there's the um, uh, pastoral care, worrying about the well-being of of kids. But there's no real, like, unified approach or ideas so um will you be working on taking that further into the education system absolutely so you know one of the things i've learned about myself is i'm mrs tenacious so i'm not you know high flyer i'm not speedy whiz i'm plod 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 tenacious tenacious persistent so absolutely you know we're back knocking on the doors again and i think, I think the bit that's really important after what you've what you've just said is to say that the 16 exercises work at the same root, right? The same one root of how, when leaders come to me and they say, I want to be even more excellent than I am already. You know, everything's going really well. I'm fit and healthy and I want to do even more. The same 16 exercises are what's, what are stopping that leader doing even more as the state, when I'm in the dysfunctioning, stressed, lost, confused, burnt out place it's exactly the same that's what i learned in my research there's not two different strategies there's not 16 exercises to be excellent and then 
in different exercises when you've got yourself in a bit of a muddle it's exactly the same and you know my brain's like oh simplicity oh my goodness I'm loving this and of course that's what the leaders you know understand is that they're doing two jobs at the same time which is they're making themselves even more excellent and then they're being able to put the education out there for those that may and it's a continuum so if you imagine connected to my authenticity at one end of the continuum I'm in the excellent place happy harmonious healthy available to problem solve big challenges staying calm then I separate myself from my authenticity and I start moving to dysfunction. I know what that feels like when I separate myself from my authenticity. I start crazy thinking, you know, you know, you know what it, and then if I stay in that separated from my authenticity, then I'm just heading for a crisis. And that's the explosion of burnout and lots of leaders ending up in, you know, sleep clinics, rehab, because they got so separated from their authenticity and if we do that to our children that early on we don't allow them to find their authenticity and they've never found it then they're much more likely to go down the route of alcohol addiction or you know choosing partners that are not great for them or choosing jobs that they hate you know how many people of my age have spent a lifetime in a job they hate because they never knew who they really were and they were separated from their authenticity and they were doing the best they could to provide an income for their family but they hated every day and they were running ailments and a bit of depression and you know low low level misery as somebody once you know described it looking all right on the surface but underneath this low level misery so yes yeah, so the 16 exercises when we're feeling good will make us even more good and when we've got lost we'll get us back into the this is who I am and my values and how I can be part of how I behave in the world. Amazing. And you have figured that out through yeah. your experience is, is congratulations and kudos to you. And like I said, having studied with you, it's an incredible process to kind of learn all of these things. And I think the whole way through, I was like, why didn't I learn any of these things in school? So maybe at this point, anyone listening would be like, what, what is one small thing that people could do each day to work on their authenticity? This doesn't have to give away your model, but oh, some yeah, exercise yeah, yeah. that is to help people connect to their own authenticity. On yeah, a day -to -day. Absolutely. Yeah, and I am about giving it away because, you know, I'm now in the last chapter of my official working career, you know, and I'm not conventional, so I don't do official. However, I think it's a really good provocation to me to say, if I am in the last chapter of my working career, how can I hand it over? My philosophy has always been when I walk in and leaders are talking about whether or not they might use my work and not my work, the work, um, <clears throat> I would say, my goal is to make myself redundant yeah so i run leadership circles around the world and we meet once a month and we go through the processes and the goal clearly is that by the end of 12 to 18 months they can run the leadership circle with the exercises without me and pass it on and pass it on so the accurate self story okay so um, authentic purpose is, is the first one and it's probably one that, that is the deepest and the one that you did you know uh, really digging into our authentic purpose but short sharp for today accurate self story um, number one in the parenting skills manual you want I want you want our kids and grandkids to leave the house at 18 with an accurate self story this is what I'm really great at this is what I'm average at and that's good enough yeah and here's my development area. Here's a behavior pattern that may be tripping me up that is good for me to be working on. And here's a missing skill that I would love to have in order to be even more great at what I'm great at. And holding those three in balance all the time. Great at, average at, good enough, development area. So we've been trained old school, Good at? No, no, I can't possibly tell you what I'm good at. That's old school. That would be, you know, being uh, arrogant and, you know, I couldn't possibly tell you what I'm good at. 
and then we've got the other polar which is i'm great at everything i can do everything amazingly i'm just fabulous um and then you know and then going oh there's nothing wrong with me nothing you know that defended nothing wrong with me and so we've we've polarized and so coming back to that fair objective so every day take five minutes and write down what is it that I'm really great at? You know, look through the, the minutiae of, you know, when I'm with friends, what is it I really offer to that group that really inspires and enlighten them? Am I a listening ear? Do I, am I good at aiming a, insightful questions? Am I the practical one? You know, what is it I offer? What is it I do at work that really, you know, creates the magic? Yeah. Am I the, you know, the, the, the one that, is really good at saying i'll make that happen quietly behind the scenes my my best friend uh healer psychotherapist and accountant what a phenomenal combination and she would say i love making order out of chaos yeah mm. give me a mess of accounts and paperwork or somebody's got built themselves in a mess and their body's hurting she loves, you know, I'm like, oh no, I'm getting a headache just thinking about creating order out of chaos, not my key skill. <laughs> that's absolutely the gift, you know, one of the many gifts that she brings. So that's what she's really, really great at. And then, you know, one of her development areas might be, you know, doing too much for other people and neglecting some self-care. So uh, my darling Kay, I'm saying that on camera, you know, <laughs> um, you know, that, that I also, you know, I can get into thinking too much on other person's behalf rather than just saying, what do you think? <laughs> That's a really, really helpful, accurate self story. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 Yes. And the power of writing every day, writing down, I am really great at. This is one of my favorite skills. You know, this is what I'm, what I really bring that has positive impact. Writing it, ingrains the commitment, changes the neural pathways. Mm. Yeah. Mm, that's a really good one. I'm totally going to do that tonight. What am I really good at? What am I, where do I need to improve? And the third one? So what you're great at. I'm great yeah, at. What you're really great at. So everybody has got the area of genius. Yeah. But you, you, you know, you see it, you look at people, you just go, how do they do that? That is so gorgeous to see that happening. Yeah, everybody has that area of genius. Then what do we average at? And average is good enough, yeah? Because we come from old school, you've got to be good at everything. That's exhausting, stressful, burnout. There are things to just be good enough average at. And then where are my development areas? Yeah. What are the things I do that keep tripping myself up, negative self-talk or rescuing other people or not being open to feedback? You know, we've all got a development area. And as so, you say, with no shame, that's the old school model. Like, I'm not good at this. Oh, I don't want anyone to know. I'm, I'll, just, I'll just hide that, that weakness, and try and big up the strengths. But actually getting real on the self story, I totally get it. It, it allows us to be real. Once we're real about our story, we, we don't have to worry so much about the shadows and the weaknesses that we're trying to like push away instead to maybe grow those. Okay, so that's really, really good. Three. I love it because you, you just said how much energy to push something away and hide. That's what the Buddhists say. You know, it's, it's if I'm trying to hide or I'm trying to overperform and, you know, pretend, that takes up all the available energy and then i'm not available to relate with you and then fix some of the bigger challenges in the world that i've been put here to take my slice in fixing yeah that's really good so um let's talk a bit about um what inspired you to set up the visionary leadership corporation and the next generation leadership program you can talk a bit about those yeah um so my inspiration that's a really great question i i i i think the really basic one is i just wanted to pull all the knowledge together and hand it over and i know and doing that together is something that that really you know i i love working in a team and i love working together and pulling on different people's creativity and and uh energy so 
it was always going to be a, t a together process for me and then handing it over you know i absolutely believe that that's my authentic purpose so you know i learned from other people and pulled snippets from other people so it wasn't a total invention on my behalf you know i believe this is a shared knowledge and i believe there are many phenomenal pioneers out there teaching the same stuff a slightly different way because we need all gateways open yeah we need people to hear it through yoga, through the dietitian, through, you know, going to the top of the mountain with the biscuit, mystic, through, you know, I work with a lot of scientists who have PhD IQs, and then they want to learn how to be spiritually and emotionally as intelligent as their IQ. So all, we want all the gateways open, my part, doing it together, and absolutely for me, I. You know, I'm just thinking about there isn't any of anything else important than making sure that nobody wastes their life being lost. That's really, really important that nobody wastes their life being lost. And most of us are, okay, we're not lost, but we, we definitely all sometimes get lost along the way. That's a quote from one of my favorite authors, Douglas Copeland, we are all just fragile little creatures who sometimes get lost along the way, unless we meet Mary Graham or learn the whole person coaching model, and then we don't need to waste time being lost, basically, because, yeah, yeah that's just lack of tools, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, uh, we, we've got seven grandkids, so one of the grandkids had a little bit of a phase of being a little bit upset at school and so mum and dad said to me you know help and I said well obviously I you know I can't step in and do anything professional because you know in families that's not appropriate I said but what I can do is do a fun um, leadership coaching session with this particular grandchild um, as a, just a fun thing and say oh would you like to know what I spend my days doing at work so I just positioned it like that but we were just sitting with a juice um and and said do you, are you at all interested in what i spend my days doing at work and then i just took them through the accurate self story uh, how's your sleep been um have you had any time to actually play rather than you know be uh, learning tennis because there's a difference between playing and learning tennis a big difference in energy so you know do you know who you really are what are you great at how's your sleep been how's your nutrition uh have you had time to play and i just went through a few of those things and the the uh what had already happened for that for that grandchild at the age of 10 by some messages from school and society and tv was that they had decided their label was i'm just not a confident person oh and they had stuck that on themselves and that whether it's conscious probably mostly subconscious until someone comes along to help yeah yeah and how many of us have been walking around with that label you know either getting us in a lot of trouble or mildly taking the edge off being really excellent yeah and so you know and so there there it is you know so you know i'll, I'll meet um, i coach you know very well-known leaders in the high profile I'm coaching one at the moment who's writing a book and it'll come out soon it's going to be amazing and that leader in the first year of us working together was unable to say what they were great at and was unable to say thank you when i gave them reflected back this is what i see you being great at yeah and that was somebody who you know theoretically and statistically you know wouldn't be in coaching over the age of 50 oh my god absolutely is soaking it up loving it you know making it doesn't matter what age and then we've got the 10 year old and both in the same, same place you know i'm just not clever i'm just not confident i'm just not good at maths i'm just not the person that will fit with this and really really deeply sad i don't i don't want anybody to feel that mm. for longer than is necessary it's such a waste of human the human soul mm. definitely definitely and that's beautiful that's beautiful that you your purpose is 
to help people so much. And I love that you're also now kind of giving away models, giving away ideas. So it's, it's not just the schools, but let's talk a bit about the legacy. What it is, what is your legacy now? Because I know that's very important. That's on the list of important things to discuss. And that's about certainly ensuring that people have these skills, but maybe you could go into it in a bit more detail. So I, I've spent the last 10 years on a plane, uh, you know, invited by lots of different corporations, as I say, to go to China, Japan and teach all of this stuff. And then I, my husband's a little bit older than me. So I said I'd already planned from 2020, I was going to be back in London, more time in London, less time on a plane so that I can savor uh, the moments with him. And uh, so that was already my plan. And then, you know, uh, this all happens. So this is great. The universe is agreeing with me. So the plan is that over the next five years that I find as many next generation leaders that want to soak up the model and extract as many coherent things from my weird brain and uh and fantastic and brain i'm going <laughs> <laughs> um so i will be running uh, a leadership program every year for the next five years so there'll be a countdown and it will be a 12-month program where we will go through all elements of the whole person model and those leaders that join will have in their mind a project so their project will be for them to go and deliver as many elements of the whole person model out into the community. So it could be a project, for instance, I give you a personal example, when my mom was in a care home with dementia because there was a point where specialist care was essential, you know, great daughter, I, you know, I was going to kill myself and not be great for her. So it was really important she went into specialist care. And my mother was very anti that when she was uh, you know, compass mentors, and I obviously felt really bad about it. However, what happened was there was an angel at this care home, and her name was Paula. And Paula was uh, worked on the teas and coffees, and she fell in love with my mother, and my mother fell in love with her. So, oh my goodness, Paula looked after my mom phenomenally, absolutely phenomenally. So, a project might be uh, somebody like Paula who was really struggling in many areas of her life yeah and needed lots of support and was on a minimum wage with no training working in a care home and had no sense at all of any way out of it yeah that that was going to be her life day in you know and with, with a burden of struggles yeah now there if if one young leader went out into the community and taught elements of the whole person model to the people in those care homes, to those carers and those assistants, that would then give them the energy, the well-being, and the power for them to take the opportunities that could be available for them. So that would be a particular project so that the next generation leader would be doing whilst at the same time teaching it back into their organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a project-based where at the end of the 12 months they will have taught the whole person model to a hundred people in their own organization and they will have picked a community project, Sean Bailey's project up in Ladbrook Grove. Uh, you know, I've done some work with him and I'd love to, you know, work with an, another young leader to give the project that he works in Ladbrook Grove more support, more resources, more insight. So that's essentially uh, what I'm planning to do in my countdown over the next five years. So anybody that's interested in doing something really practical, really tangible, drop me an email. Sounds really good. And on that note, as we're nearing the end of our time together, is there anything else you want to share? Like, what do you want people to know about you and, and what you're doing that you haven't already shared? But what so, are you looking forward to? That's another question you could ask. Right. Okay. So um, I love collaborating. I'm extremely devoted. So I'm persistent, tenacious, and I love a collaboration. And really, I want them to know the whole person model. I'm merely a vessel for that. And, of course, and I do it my way. And as I say, there are other uh, amazing people doing elements of the whole person model their way and you know I worked with one guy in Germany and he said I really love what you do I want it thought by a slightly different energy from yours I'm like that's great as, as long as you're doing it 
<laughs> I'm my job's done. You know, I opened your mind to it, in, and he went off and found somebody that was twice his doing it their way. So you know, we all have a you know, we read something. There are books we love. There's a chemistry. So I'm one person. What I want is them to love and know the whole person that they can really love and know themselves. That's that's what I really want. And I am really looking forward to um, uh, short term coming out of lockdown, um, just sitting with some pals, having a coffee and a flapjack. I'm really looking forward to that. Football coming back. <laughs> and, you know, medium term, I am really looking forward to all of these phenomenal people that are putting the whole person model out there in all sorts of different shapes. You know, Prince William's doing a great job. You know, the, the men for mental health are doing a great job. There's so much great stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm looking forward one day to there being this massive conference where everybody gets together on stage. That's, it would be a big enough stage, but you know what I mean? Where we're really joined up, because at the moment there's lots of disparate parts. And I just mm -hmm. feel and see that joining up happening. Well, it might happen on Zoom, right? Since that's an easy way to connect people from all around the world. They don't fly, they can all show up and then get back to their daily routine. Um, just before we go, do you have any tips for people in terms of mental health as we come out of this lockdown? Because obviously there's a lot of fear and uncertainty and a little awkwardness. How can we come out of this as gently and um, lovingly happily as possible and i will and i and i think that you know there's there's a lot of people who've been working non-stop through lockdown who are absolutely exhausted so recovery time is really essential uh so when we've exhausted ourselves when we're frightened when we're angry when we're getting caught up in toxic conversations rest and recovery that really simple thing and absolutely essential you know lie down with a good book in a quiet room for 15 minutes you know i've got one leader like you um in france really busy young family and she uh, just sits in her car for 15 minutes and lies her head on the steering wheel yeah previously she wasn't doing any of that and she said just 15 minutes a day Absolutely. She said, I can stay sane. I can go back into the house and be reasonably coherent. It's absolutely essential that we have rest and recovery. And I will go back to the card for today is, you know, step back and push away the external voices and go back inside to ourselves and reconnect with ourselves. And sometimes I have to do that four or five times a day, you know, for five minutes if there's a lot of energy around. And you know, I'll just suddenly say to my husband, I'm just having a walk around the block, <laughs> you know, reconnect, breathe, <laughs> calm. Beautiful, beautiful. That's a wonderful note to end this conversation on. It's so good to see you and to speak with you and to learn from you always. And I really look forward to when I, when I can see you again in real life or um, be a part of one of the many exciting things that you're doing. I would love that so much. So um, yeah. Mary Graham, you're awesome. It's great to see you and speak with you. Thank you, namaste and all of that. Um, be well and really thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jada. Fantastic. And I will absolutely be getting on a train in me midweek and coming down and having a coffee and a flapjack with you somewhere near your your local uh, awesome. local coffee shop. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. I look forward to the real life reunions. But till then, we've always got the Zooms, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for taking part in this podcast series. Really, it's wonderful to have you and your expertise on it. So I'm really excited about this episode to get out. <laughs> Great. And you are doing a phenomenal job with your talents. Phenomenal. Uh, oh my goodness. 10 years. My goodness. Look at you. Look I, at you. I can't thank you enough for, for that experience. I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to write it all in a letter sometime properly because like it, it changed the course of, of my life and the direction I was going in. And it gave me, tools that I have I have really supported many others in in finding their personal power and purpose and it's really really changed my life that experience and I, I would like to be a part of the the next stage but we don't have to talk about that all on the podcast but I really when I hear you talking about the courses and the teachings I'm thinking like yes I would like to come and be a part of that yes 
absolutely. And I will be in touch with you. There's, there's, uh, I think there's a real reason why we've reconnected. So I, I really want to follow up on, I on love that. that. I love that. And as I said, this somehow this series is turning into a, a, a revisiting of the amazing teachers who've helped me along the way. And you have, you shine so brightly. Thank you so much for, for teaching me and for returning to talk to me now. Ah, yeah. A little person has just come in. Oh the my goodness. Can I, can I see the small person? Yes, yes, yes. I'll stop recording and I'll put her on. Okay. Oh